Hello loves, I'm grateful to have another opportunity to share with you my experience, knowledge, wisdom, during ascension process. Yay! What spiritual teachers don't tell you, part dos. Dos. <laughs> so I decided I was actually walking along the, the road and the idea came to me. I was like, you know what? I need to create this part because I think it's very important as a student, as a seeker of knowledge, that when we look for spiritual knowledge that we have to understand that the teacher is coming from a perspective that he is learning how to master. Uh, for example, Till Swan has mastered shadow work, right? Um, Aaron Doherty has um, mastered consciousness, how to expand his consciousness. Uh, Ralph Smart has uh, mastered psychology of YouTube. Uh, who else? Matt Kahn has... Um, mastered uh, the connection with source, uh, love. Uh, Raisa Krista, Krista Raisa, uh, he, she has mastered uh, channeling the Orion Council. Flight Boss has mastered the um, physical realm. And all these people have their own mastery of, of an own perspective in the grand scheme of things, right? And so I want to just let you guys know that this is very important to know when you look at uh, spiritual teachers and you're acquiring knowledge, what is their mastery? What is their technique? What are the tools that they're giving you? And how does this relate to you? Uh, so what spiritual teachers don't tell you is that they have problems too. <laughs> Can you believe it? Problems. They are. All spiritual teachers, spiritual students, people generally, the human population, the collective, uh, the individual, they, we all have issues, karma, uh, energetic con uh, bonds, contracts that we are constantly trying to resolve, trying to integrate, trying to transmute, trying to uh, finish. And we're humans and we all have problems. We all have issues that we are working with. We're not 100%. I say we as spiritual teachers. The spiritual teachers, they, they, they don't have it all together. Okay? And no one does unless you're Buddha. You're, you are a ascended master. Okay? Now, these are... Um, people who have an exception. They have mastered the self-actualization of the human being, right? There's like a pyramid. I don't know. I have it right here. It's like the bottom one is self-awareness and then there's self-exploration, self-discovery, uh, self-understanding, self-love. Okay, hold on. Self-transformation self and self-mastery. Look it up. Um, I got the image on on Google, and I really resonated with it. So I just saw it, and look how it connects. I wasn't even connecting that. So there's certain levels of self that we have to discover and become uh, one with. And so teachers are trying, the spiritual teachers are trying to become self-mastery, right? That's essentially what the goal of a spiritual teacher is. They took the path of trying to become a master of the self. And not everyone will do it. Not everyone will commit to it. For example, I delve into both, okay? I try to be a human, so I don't, um, I dive into both realms, if you could say. Right, so I'm committed, but I'm not like 100% committed. That's why this year is where I'm really trying to be 100% committed for you all, for you loves. And so we can start this journey together. Well, this adventure one more time. Uh, so yeah, people have problems. Teachers have problems. Everyone has problems. And so it's always a great conversation to have with, your, with an audience, with people you love, with people you don't love, is... You know, we, we are trying to resolve our problems, right? That's why we ask for help, or that's why we figure it out on our own. Um, some people have problems with... Okay, for instance, for example, uh, Aaron Doherty. I know I've been mentioning him on the other one, but he's on my mind right now. Uh, he 
expands his consciousness. He makes videos in his house, in his apartment, and that's all he does, okay? And that's all he does. Like, there is no other human connection with besides his friends and his family that maybe he does engage, but he doesn't show me. But on his Instagram, it's all spiritual. It's all like, that's all he does. And he enjoys it. Uh, for me, when I realize that... You know, I'm an awakened being and I have this energetic healing. You could say that I'm maybe like second wave or third wave of the uh, wave, waves of volunteer, according to Dolores Cannon. Um, and I, I for sure know that I anchor in some energy, honey. I anchor that energy from source <laughs> for people around me. They, can, they know it. They know it. <laughs> and... I came to Tokyo, I came to Japan, Tokyo, because somehow it was calling my name and so I'm here. And they definitely need this energy. They are so disconnected. Even though they're connected with nature, uh, that's the lower chakras, you guys. Nature is the lower chakras. And yes, Source does, uh, Source and God, they're all, they're everywhere and nowhere at the same time. I know that's a paradox. You'll, if you understand, you understand. But nature is just one aspect of the relationship. Like Japanese people cannot relate to other people that are not Japanese. That's a problem, right? It's a problem because we're all human. And when you see someone and their separation, that is where the conflict for the person perceiving separation uh, needs to resolve, right? But that's beside the point, right? That's another video of talking about Tokyo, Japan, regardless. I decided to come to Tokyo to take on that responsibility to help Japanese people to integrate the energy and to become familiar with foreigners, to not be scared of foreigners, to communicate with foreigners because they're all in their own little cluster, their own bubble, their mind, right? And some people take the challenge and they get out of the comfort zone. Some people don't. And this is where I'm doing my research and my study. However, I'm in the field working with it. You know, I'm in the field applying. Like, Aaron Doherty, he is just acquiring vast information and knowledge and just regurgitating it to you guys. And, you know, that's a different perspective, right? If you put him in a real-life situation, like you put him in a Tokyo in a city or you put him somewhere where those, you know, those concepts are use and he might have a difficult time there might be some conflict there is what i'm saying right so every teacher has a conflict that they're trying to resolve and i just want you guys to know that i don't want this video to be long you know one of mine i'm going to share one of mine and i can go much into detail however i'm just going to hit the super the surface of it for you got for you love so you can maybe relate or you know give me some of your advice or share it or whatever it is, right? But for me, I've always had my lower chakras, my lower three chakras closed or somewhat blocked since I could remember. I'm not a grounding person. I'm, a, I'm definitely in my mind. I'm in the imagination. I'm in the astral world and I'm always not in the present, right? And, and I've been trying to fix this, not fix it, but resolve it, integrate it. And I do have techniques that I do to help me with that. But typically, it's more of the root chakra, sacral, and the solar plexus. So it's all lower chakras. It's like interacting with this reality. The other chakras, honey, they are open and blasting with energy that you could tell that they're open. And they're, you know, that's why I'm so spiritual. Because it's like that's what I focus on and that's how I see the world. And I'm not grounded. And that means that that comes with security, that comes with uh, relationships with, uh, with partners, and that goes with the willpower. So if you have those three categories and then you break it down further, there are some deep issues there <laughs> rooted that I am trying to um, resolve and integrate. So I'm not, I'm not going to sit here, read you a book about eat the frog about procrastination because uh, my will, right? My, my solar plexus is definitely closed or blocked at a certain time that sometimes I don't want to make videos or sometimes I don't want to go to work or sometimes I get sick or sometimes I, um, you know, just don't feel like it or don't have the willpower to, to continue on, you know, living or thinking or whatever. Right. So I'm procrastinating. I'm resisting something. Right. So, 
I'm not gonna sit here, read the book, and eat the frog, and then regurgitate that information to you when I have literally, like, what am I talking about? I read the book, but I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh yeah, this is what you should do, and this is, no, because that is not my, that is not my field of information. I just know that the energy needs to be transmuted and integrated one more time to release it and to become one with that energy. And so I have practices. I just want to just share that with you because, you know, people are like, oh, you're a spiritual teacher. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. And you're like everything. And I look up to you and, you know, yes, but we're human, right? We're human. We live in this world and uh, we should interact with one another in that sense where it will help each other, essentially what it is. So yeah, that's, I, I think one of the major key points that spiritual teachers do not tell you is that they have problems and they don't talk about those problems because that loses their credibility and that is complete nonsense. If you watch a YouTuber and they talk about problems and you're like, oh, well, they're not that spiritual because they can't resolve it. No, 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 no. You need to stop, reflect on that belief system and do something about it because everyone has problems. Even scientists who study certain things don't understand they have problems. It's like, perfect example, psychologists. It's literally like a psychologist. You go to a psychologist to talk about your problem, but don't you think that psychologists also have problems? It's like, what? It's like a very, it's like a paradox. And so, what I'm trying to say is there should be compassion and awareness on that and that that should not be a topic where we don't communicate. Uh, I know it's part of our weaknesses and you know a lot of people don't want to expose weaknesses but that's a different video that I can go into. I just want to share that with you so you could have some understanding and awareness of what is actually going on in, in, in the spiritual community and for you guys that don't always think Oh, well, I'm, I need to be this image of like, you know, achieving my goals and having a connection with source and, you know, projecting this image that is not real, you know, and there's always, there's always need to be room for, for that vulnerability is what I'm saying. And typically shows on TV, they love vulnerability. That is what makes us human is vulnerability. And if you cannot access vulnerability, then that is a concept that needs to be integrated in your life. And we, I can make that another video. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts and feelings are on this uh, perspective. Do you have any teachers, any spiritual teachers, or do, have you observed anything in regards to this where teachers don't tell you that they have certain issues uh, in regards to their life? Uh, do you think it's a positive thing? Do you think it's a negative thing uh, for spiritual teachers to talk about it? Uh, is it professional? Is it not professional? Is it transparent? Is it not transparent? You let me know down because it's. I think it's very interesting. And let's have a dialogue on this concept. So yeah, I will feel you later. Bye.